Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. Now, when I came back from Italy, one of the most amazing things that I had there was a meat dish. And it's one of those dishes I've been meaning to make in the Instant Pot for a while, but I said to myself, I really want to make sure the flavors are right, I want it to do it Italian style, and I want it to be something that's going to be so melt in your mouth, unbelievably good and tender and just fall apart amazingness that it has to be done properly. And I'm proud to report that I'm going to bring that to you right now, and I've mastered this. Guys, we are making something called Oso Buco. Now, what is Oso Buco? Oso Buco are veal shanks that are cut into about one and a half inch thick pieces, and then they're basically braised or cooked to the point where they basically fall off the bone. They don't basically, they do fall off the bone. It's some of the most tender, unbelievable meat you will ever have, and the flavor of it itself is just naturally there. It is so wonderfully good, and I feel like Oso Buco, just the name of it, intimidates people on how to make it, maybe because it's town so fancy because it's Italian and stuff, but don't worry about that because it is one of the easiest things you'll make in your instant pot. I feel like I say that about every recipe because I, you know, I strive for making things easy, but guys, trust me on this. It is easy, it's magnificent, and it's relatively quick, so let's go right to the instant pot and make some of the most amazing and easiest and quickest Oso Buco ever. So I wrestled Bugs Bunny for two of these carrots, and I want to take them and peel them and chop them up. Then I want to take a stalk or a rib of celery and also slice them up just like I did the carrots. And I want to just add them to the carrots. And then I want to take one medium yellow onion and dice that up too. And you could add that to the carrots and celery too if you'd like. Now I want to take about a half a cup of all-purpose flour and put it on a plate. And I'm going to season it with a few shakes of kosher salt, just a few pinches in there, and a little bit of some black pepper. And then grab a fork and then just kind of mix everything together so everything is nice and combined here because we're going to use this to dredge our veal shanks, which are coming up. So the cut of meat you want to use in an osabuco is a veal shank. That's absolutely required. It's really no other way around it. It won't be an osabuco otherwise. And you can find this in the meat section of most supermarkets, or if they don't have them there, you can ask the butcher or go to a butcher. But it has to be a veal shank cut of veal to make an osabuco. And the bone will be inside the osabuco, and it should be about one and a half inches thick. You see that? Just like this. Like I said, these were already prepared for me in the market, which is great. But if you don't find veal shanks in your market prepared this way, have your butcher do it. A lot of the supermarkets Markets butchers will do these things for you and cut it for you. And I'm using between three to four pounds of osabuco. I have a whole other package I'm using. So I'm using about four to five shanks. And now it's time to dredge these veal shanks in the flour mixture. So then just put it inside the flour mixture. This is called dredging. When you put flour all over a piece of meat, it's dredging. So just dredge it on both sides, just like this, nice and good and then set it aside onto another plate. And by the way, happy early Hanukkah. I'm only about what, like four months early? And repeat the process for all the veal shanks. And there are all my veal shanks, nice and dredged in the flour, and now I'll set those aside. Now I wanna go to my Instant Pot and add in one quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Now I'm gonna come down to my Instant Pot control panel, I'm gonna hit the saute function, and I'm gonna make sure it's on the more or the high setting. And after about three minutes of the oil being heated up, we're going to add our osabuco in batches and then brown it on each side for about a minute. I should say sear instead of brown. And then flip them over. Get the other side for another minute. And then once they're seared on both sides for about a minute, we'll remove them and we'll put them on a plate. And then we'll repeat the process until all of our veal shanks are browned on each side. And there is all of my veal shanks nice and seared on each side. And now we're going to just set this aside and then focus on the pot again. Now I want to add two tablespoons or a quarter of a stick of salted butter to the pot. Stir it around a little bit. And also scrape and deglaze the bottom of the pot a little bit to get any of the remnants of the flour from when we seared the veal shanks. Okay, and once the butter is all melted and we're sizzling, we'll add in our onions, carrots, and celery. We'll stir that around in the pot and make sure it's all mixed up with all the butter and all the olive oil. And we're gonna let this cook for about five minutes. And then after about five minutes of the veggies cooking, you'll see the onions will have gotten a little translucent. They don't have to be really softened that much by now, but about five minutes should do the trick in terms of how long we wanna saute it. We're gonna now add in some white wine. And I'm using one cup of a dry white wine, like a Chardonnay or a Sauvignon Blanc, but if you don't have that around and you only have like a white cooking wine, you can use that. But of course, this stuff is much better to use. Now I'm gonna add in one cup of chicken broth, and for my chicken broth, I use one teaspoon of chicken better than bouillon, mixed with one cup of water, as well as a 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes, 
and one tablespoon of tomato paste. And I'll season it with one teaspoon of seasoned salt, one teaspoon of dried rosemary, one teaspoon of dried thyme, and a bay leaf. And now let's mix all of that together in the pot very well so everything gets nice and combined. Good, now we're gonna add back in our veal shanks. We'll just simply put them inside the pot. Try to put the larger ones on the bottom if possible. And then we'll just sit them on top of each other. And that's perfect, just like that. Now let's secure our lid. Make sure we're in sealing position. Now I'll come back down on my control panel and hit the keep warm cancel or just the cancel button. And then I wanna hit the manual or pressure cook button depending on your model. Some say manual, some say pressure cook. And then I wanna hit that and I wanna go for 20 minutes on high pressure guys and that's it. Now while our Oso Buco is cooking inside the Instant Pot, I wanna now make this topping that we call gremolata. It's like this amazing mixture of some lemon zest, garlic, parsley, olive oil, and salt. So I wanna start with taking simply just the zest of one lemon just like that you see that all the shavings and strands from the lemon skin just like this go right into the bowl that's all we care about and as for the lemon itself I don't know make lemonade or something with it and to those who don't have magical snapping powers I'll show you how to do this you just take a lemon zester that looks like this hold it like on a flat surface and then just kind of scrape away just like this all we really want to do is shave the lemon basically and all the little lemon strands that come off the little shavings like these guys over here that's our zest so now I want to go to a food processor or a mini blender of some sort and then add about a half a cup of some Italian parsley. That's like the flatter kind of parsley, not the kind that's super curly. Add my lemon zest, three cloves of garlic, one teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil, and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Lid on there, and we're gonna blend it up. And then we're done. Let's take the lid off. There we go. And there is our gremolata. Wonderful. We're gonna add that as a topping for the final touch on our osabuco when we serve it. Transfer it to a little bowl of ramekin and then we'll just set that aside. And a little bit of this stuff goes a long way, guys. We don't need a lot of this. You're just gonna dollop a little bit of this stuff on top of your osabuco right when you serve it. If you even want it on there, it's not necessary, but it's a really fantastic touch. And our pressure cooking cycle is complete, and now we're going to allow a 10 minute natural release. That means we do absolutely nothing until this counts up to 10, which is going to start counting upwards now. And then from there, we'll finish with a quick release. So again, to those who might be new to this whole entire thing, we do nothing for 10 minutes. The steam is going to naturally release on its own for 10 minutes in the pot, and then we'll do a quick release. And it just counted up to 10. That means 10 minutes of a natural release have passed, which means we'll follow it up with a quick release. And now that our pins drop, let's take the lid off. Oh boy, oh, it smells amazing. There's our Osobuco. Now, because I want this unbelievable sauce to become a little thicker and turn into like almost a gravy, I'm going to take my Osobuco out and put it on a plate for the time being. Mm, it's just gonna be super tender, so be very delicate with it. And we'll just let our meat sit here for a few moments on the plate while we focus on our sauce. I'm gonna come down here and hit the keep warm cancel button and then I'm gonna go to the saute button again and just stay on the more or the high setting and wait till we bring this to a bubble. Now I wanna make a cornstarch slurry so I can thicken up my sauce. I wanna take three tablespoons of cornstarch mixed with three tablespoons of water and then blend them together until they form a nice smooth slurry. And once our sauce is bubbling, I'm gonna immediately pour in my cornstarch slurry and stir it up at the exact same time. And this sauce is gonna thicken almost instantly. Oh, and by the way, you can get that bay leaf out of there. Let it bubble for about 30 seconds. So because I want the bubbles to die down, I'm just gonna turn my pot off. And once the bubbles begin to die down, you'll see we have a nice, fantastic gravy-like consistency, which I love for this sauce. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plate up an Oso Buco shank, and now I'm gonna pour that amazing sauce right over it. And now I'm just gonna put a little bit of the gremolata right on top of it. And guys, doesn't that look gorgeous? There is our beautiful, beautiful Oso Buco, all ready to serve. And there is my osobuco. I don't even need a knife to cut this because it's that tender. It just comes right off the bone. Oh, the shank. <laughs> oh boy. I swear, osobuco is one of those things where the meat is already so naturally full of flavor. You don't even have to do anything to it. You don't have to season it. It already has incredible flavor to it. And my, 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 is it ever tender. When Elvis was singing that Love Me Tender song, I'm telling you, he wrote it about osobuco. 
and the gramolata on top makes the most amazing compliment to the sauce and to the osabuco itself. I highly recommend you do make it. But this is up there with the most tender things you'll ever have, like short ribs or pulled pork, anything in that class of tenderness. This stuff right here is right up there amongst them, if not the most tender. Look, it just falls off the bone. And look, watch this. I'll show you myself. You see that? There's zero toughness. It just literally melted into my mouth. I'll show you again. Look. It melts right into your mouth. Oh, and the sauce. Mmm. That wonderful, wonderful, lovely sauce. You can serve this with a pasta, with a rice. It's an Italian dish, so it goes pretty much with anything good that has carbs in it. And serving it over rice is actually great too because the sauce will just go right into the rice and it's perfect that way. But I'm literally just taking my fork and traveling around that shank bone and I have all this amazingness. And actually the little strand of fat that encases the entire thing, I love eating that. It's actually delicious. Mmm, it's so tender. And the flavor is amazing. All right, right down to the bone, look at this. Nothing left but the bone. Oh, and there's some marrow in there too. Oh, if you like bone marrow, look at that, right through the bone. I love bone marrow, I'm not gonna lie. Guys, this thing is so good, I literally ate everything around the bone, and it's one of the most amazing things you can make in your Instant Pot. It braises it so beautifully. Guys, if you like these videos, go to PressureLuckCooking.com because I have so many recipes I'm losing track, and more are coming out each week. The portfolio keeps growing, so keep checking it out, share it out to everybody, and also make sure you pin any recipe you like to your favorite board on Pinterest. I make it pin friendly for you. So you can pin the tail on the Jeffrey. Go to facebook.com slash cooking and like the page. Like it or follow it or whatever. You know, it's cool to do that. Anytime a new recipe drops, you'll see it there. Anytime there's a sale on an item, I will let you know. And at Pressure Luck for my YouTube, subscribe there because all my videos live there. You don't want to miss that. And also for Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. Pinterest Interest is everything right now, so make sure you pin. Guys, thank you so much. And Osabuco is one of the greatest things you can make in your Instant Pot. It literally is melting your mouth heaven. So forget making one shank, three shanks, or five. Make seven. Thank you so much again for your support. This is a wonderful summer meal or any time of the year, especially in the winter as well. And enjoy life, family, friends, and good food. Take care.